Hello everyone and welcome to the PatternVest.com uh, YouTube channel. Today we will talk about scraping financial data in Python and in particular we will talk about earnings per share uh, metric. Why are we doing this? Um, earnings per share is one of the most important financial indicators uh, which may um, drive um, big uh, stock prices changes. Um, how are we going to do this? Uh, we will um, use several Python libraries like Request, Beautiful Soup, and Pandas um, to achieve the goal. So first, we will get a raw HTML um, code um, using the Request library. Then we will feed it to the Beautiful Soup object and extract uh, particular um, tags. Um, which represent uh, an HTML table content. Um, then we will get uh, Pandas data frame and before some um, data preparation and cleaning in that data frame. And finally, we will visualize um, a final version of a data frame with a scatter plot and histogram. This is an only an introduction. Uh, you can read the full text uh, on my website, uh, pythoninvest.com, on create uh, scraping earnings per share, EPS. So let's begin. Um, we do uh, standard imports um, and installation of Beautiful Soup 4 library. Um, we pip install Beautiful Soup 4 and import request Beautiful Soup Pandas and NumPy. After that, uh, we go and check the web page we want to scrape. I have it open in another tab. Uh, this is finance.yaku.com uh, slash calendar slash earnings. You see that there are parameters from and to and specific date chosen. That is 16th of May. On that date, there are 20, 223 earnings and we want to scrape the first 100 earnings. You can click the button next and you will see that um, this address actually changed. Now there is an offset 100 and size 100. So you can scrape another 100 uh, records by changing this URL. Uh, let's get back to code. We want to scrape only one table from the whole web page. This is this table. It consists of um, six rows, symbol, company, earnings, call time, EPS estimate, reported estimate, reported EPS and surprise and percent. The most important columns are EPS estimate, reported EPS and surprise percent. So EPS estimate that, uh, that it is an estimate by a company or analysts that was provided before an earnings call. Reported EPS, uh, this is a number which actually um, happened and surprise it's a difference between reported TPS and TPS estimate so if it's uh, uh, the actual number is uh, higher than it was expected it is a positive surprise and it is green if it is uh, uh, if, if reported TPS is lower than expected it is a negative surprise like uh, this example and it is a, a red color surprise so uh, we want to have this table as a pandas data frame and in order to do that we can um, do a brief debugging in um, in chrome uh, code inspector uh, we can see that a company um, column name actually is a span tag um, one uh, value is a a TD tag and um, top value for the whole table is a table tag. So we will be searching for this uh, tags table TD and span and read the data that is between uh, those tags. Okay, let's start. Uh, we have uh, this URL we uh, call request library uh, get methods uh, provide the URL link and then 
save all the results uh, to the object uh, R response, we can check several um, methods of this object uh, to ensure that um, the result is correct. Uh, R.k is true, so we received something. Uh, our status code is 200, so anything that is not equal to 200 is a problem. 200 is a good uh, reply from um, HTTP server. Our text is a full text um, that we see in our um, browser inspectors and we will be filtering this r.text in order to find the text that, that we need. So next we generate a beautiful soup object uh, uh, and save it in a variable called soup. Um, we find all occurrences of tag table in that object and store it in a table. So here if you try to print this, um, it will return to you uh, everything that is um, between table tags. Actually, it's everything um, that is stored in the table with a lot of um, unnecessary for us information like uh, classes, styles, uh, etc. So we have only one table, which is good. So we, we have uh, the table that we need and then we can uh, find all spans uh, in, in the table, um, soup.table.thead, find all spans. So these spans are um, inside t head um, tag, you can check it in inspector as well. Um, and uh, then we generate an array of uh, columns. Here we see the same columns uh, that we saw on a web page symbol, company, uh, earnings, call time, EPS estimate, reports, DPS, and surprise and percent. Then we, we try to, to get all the data with the same methods uh, by looking at the table T body all TR values. It returns exactly 100 rows, which is a good sign. So we have um, all rows needed and inside uh, each row we have um, six different values, um, TD values, uh, which represent um, the, the values uh, in cells. So now we, we see that stocks uh, underscore DF data frame looks exactly as we see it on, on a web page. And the problem with this data frame is that if you call dot info method, you will see um, that all types um, are object. It's, it is not uh, integer or float. So you can't do any arithmetic operations, for example, with, with the data. And second uh, problem is that uh, you can't convert it to, um, uh, to another data type where while you have uh, empty data cells. Um, it's not empty, it is, uh, it is a string value. Um, so we want to erase all rows and all cells um, where um, surprise EPS estimate or reported test EPS is not provided. So we create three filters um, and save um, the result to stocks uh, underscore df underscore no mission. And now you will see that it is only 60 entries out of 100 where all stats are actually filled. Um, if you check um, its uh, head uh, five um, rows, you will see that it looks uh, good. Now we do the transformations of types. We convert uh, um, three columns to float values using method uh, as type. And if you check dot in four again, you will see that um, this data frame has 60 non null um, rows uh, with the proper flow types. Um, and uh, now we can 
um, do the final step, uh, the visualization. Let's check what we have in a scatter plot. Um, so let's filter um, our reported EPS um, to be less than 10. Actually, we can make it even smaller just to remove these outliers and let's have it less than less than two. Um, and you will see um, that uh, reported EPS can be um, somewhere between minus two and plus 1.5 and EPS estimate can be between minus 1.2 and plus 0.5. Um, if axes are equal, all numbers should lie uh, ideally on a diagonal so that reported TPS approximately equals to EPS estimate. Um, and now, as this uh, is a flow data type, we can do the analysis. Uh, so, um, when we removed uh, several outliers, now we have 56 instead of 60 records. Uh, of uh, all uh, report TPS that is less than uh, two. Um, the average um, value for surprise is 19.7%. Uh, and surprise can be minus 900% or plus 1900%. It can be a very big um, surprise. So we can build a histogram for uh, this surprise. We see that the majority of records are concentrated actually around zero. So 50% uh, um, median value of surprise is just minus 12%. So it is um, somewhere between uh, minus 12 to 14 percent surprise it is actually quite small surprise but there are some outliers uh, and these outliers can be quite big um, of course this uh, call-up doesn't give us uh, an answer to the important question um, does this surprise um, actually show a big influence on stock um, on the stock's price or is there a, some threshold of this surprise after which there is a stock price jump? Or uh, is there an, an absolute value of uh, earnings per share, like uh, all earnings per share that are more than $1 um, are more um, influenced by big uh, surprise numbers? So all of that you can read uh, again um, in this article uh, on my website pythoninvest.com um, and actually there is an even more advanced next article um, which takes 200 most liquid stocks and does an in-depth analysis of all history of earnings per share for uh, those articles and checks if there was a price jump for uh, big or small uh, surprises uh, for those um, um, stocks. Thanks for watching and see you next time.